Hi, welcome to today's On This Day in Tudor History Talk. I'm Claire Ridgway. I write uh, history books and blog about history uh, for a living, uh, and I'm a self-obsessed uh, Tudor history nut too. Now, I'm going to take you back to the year 1567. So in England, uh, 1567 was uh, in Elizabeth I's reign, but this is something actually that take, takes place in Scotland, that neighbouring kingdom. For it was on this day in Tudor history, the 24th of July, 1567, that 24 year old Mary, Queen of Scots, who was imprisoned at Lochleven Castle and who'd sadly recently suffered a miscarriage, was forced to abdicate. Um, she was forced to abdicate in favour of her one-year-old son, James. Um, this James would uh, became King James VI of Scotland and, of course, in the future would become uh, King James I of England. So she was forced to abdicate. He became King James VI and his uncle, who was Mary's illegitimate half-brother, James Stuart, Earl of Murray, um, was to act as regent for the one-year-old boy. Now, Mary's private secretary, Claude, now de la Boisselier, recorded this event in his memoirs. Um, these memoirs he wrote uh, in French, uh, but they've been translated into English as the history of Mary Stuart. Um, and here is what he said. On the afternoon of the day of, and then there's a blank, 1567, I think that's damaged um, his, his memoirs. The Lords Lindsay and Ruthven, accompanied by two notaries and the said Melville, came into the Queen's chamber. She was lying on her bed in a state of very great weakness, partly by reason of her extreme trouble, partly in consequence of a great flux, the result of a miscarriage of twins, her issue by Bothwell, so that she could move only with great difficulty. So she's just, just as an aside, she has just suffered a miscarriage, said to have been twins that she was carrying uh, by the Earl of Bothwell, fathered by him. With extreme audacity and anger, Lindsay gave her to understand of the commission with which he was charged by the nobility, namely to make her sign certain letters for the resignation of the crown, which he required her to be pleased to read. Although she'd already been assured by Melville in the name of the nobles mentioned above that she need make no difficulty, she plainly refused to do so. She could not in conscience her heart telling her that she was innocent, prejudice her honour by sanctioning such an unjust statement. At the same time, she knew that her life was in great and immediate danger, and of truth, it was the intention of the rebels, if she did not sign these letters, to take her from Loch Leven, and as they were crossing the lake, to throw her into it, or secretly to convey her to some island in the middle of the sea, there to be kept unknown to the whole world, in close custody for the remainder of her life. Lindsay confirmed this, for as soon as he saw that Her Majesty resolutely refused to sign these letters, he told her to rise from bed and that he had charged to carry her to a place where he would give a good account of her to the lords of the country. Several times he advised her to sign, for if she did not, she would compel them to cut her throat, however unwilling they might be. This poor princess, seeing herself thus treated by her own subjects and being without any of her domestics, for the two femmes de chambre whom she'd only had with her had been turned out, asked where she was to be taken. She demanded very earnestly to be admitted before the estates of the country and the parliament to answer to the points mentioned in these letters. Lindsay replied that he had no instructions on these heads and could say nothing more. Thus, without any form of legal proceeding or knowledge of the cause, they compelled Her Majesty, by threats and present violence, to sign these instruments, which they caused to be read by the said notaries. When they asked her what she thought of the matter, she answered several times that she did not consent to the contents of these instruments, that she had signed them in direct opposition to her intention and will, and that they had been extorted from her by force and constraint. 
She protested, therefore, that she would observe and keep them no longer than during her imprisonment, and she frequently asked those who were present to be her witnesses. Now, Mary signed these deeds, uh, signed the documents, uh, making her abdicate from the throne in the hope that the documents would be found invalid because they were signed under duress. She'd been threatened with having her throat cut, so that was a definite duress. But sadly, it was the end of her reign and her son James was crowned king on the 29th of July, 1567 at the Church of the Holy Rood in Stirling. Now goes on to write that after Mary had signed the papers, she was taken with great altercation on both sides into a great gloomy tower in Loch Leven. She was there shut up within an iron gate in such a miserable condition that no poor criminal could be treated worse. He also claims that she was deprived of ink, paper and books and that attempts were made to poison her. As you'll know from my previous On This Day uh, in History videos, <clears throat> Mary escaped from Loch Leven on the 2nd of May 1568 and fled to neighbouring England. Unfortunately, she was then placed in protective custody and was to spend the rest of her life as Elizabeth I's prisoner. And I'll give you links uh, to my videos on her escape and also um, how she was, uh, yes, how she went from one prison to another, really. Um, why was Mary forced to abdicate? Well, uh, various reasons, but she'd been implicated in the death of her husband, her second husband, Lord Darnley. And then she'd, uh, she'd married the man that everyone thought was responsible for Darnley's death, um, the Earl of Bothwell. And uh, yes, had been found to be uh, not the kind of woman that Scotland wanted uh, ruling over them. Uh, so yes, she uh, had lots of opposition. That's putting it far too simply but uh, those were the, the feelings of the, the Scottish lords at the time, that she was very unsuitable and it would be best for her infant son and a regent uh, to rule Scotland for her. So very sad, but uh, there you go. On this day in Tudor history, we have uh, Mary, Queen of Scots, no longer being Mary, Queen of Scots, and her son uh, taking over the throne of Scotland. I'll be back tomorrow. Please do give me a like if you've enjoyed this video and do consider subscribing as well. Um, likes and uh, subscribers really do help these uh, videos to be found by other people on YouTube. Uh, you can hit the bell to be notified as videos go live as well. I've got a meowing cat outside the door. She wants to be let in. Uh, I had to close the door because there's so much noise in the rest of the house. Anyway, I'll see you tomorrow. Take care. Bye-bye.